Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart. Welcome to another edition of Breaking News. Today is Sunday, January 7th, 2024. And as always, we're looking at the top stories of the day that have something to do with the last day's Bible prophecy as predicted in Scripture. And of course, this all leads to the coming of Jesus Christ to the earth, these stories, and that's why we get so excited about them. Now, the stories today will all center around Israel, a nation that will never see peace. Now, we know there'll be a false peace brought to Israel before the return of Jesus Christ by this final Antichrist. In fact, Jesus warned the religious leaders in his day about this. In John chapter 5 and verse 43, it says, I have come with the authority of my father. I come with the authority my father has given me, Jesus told the religious leaders, but you don't accept me. If someone else comes with his own authority, you will accept him. That's John chapter 5 and verse 43 from the translation God's word. Basically, Jesus said, I've come in the name of the Father, by the authority of my Father. You haven't accepted me, but someone's going to come someday in their own name, their own authority. Him you will receive, and we know that to be true. It's still ha going to happen in the future with this final Antichrist when he comes on the scene. Now, Paul warned about the false peace that this personage will bring, too. He said to the Thessalonians, or you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly, like a thief in the night, when people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, the disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin, and there will be no escape. That's First Thessalonians 5, 3 from the New Living Translation. All right, now this brings us to a real quick announcement. We're going to do a very exciting announcement before we get into the headlines. Starting tomorrow, on our YouTube page and on our website and on our app, we will have a new feature. It's called Your Bible Questions Answered. What it will be, it's a separate feature dealing with questions you folks have been asking about not only last day's Bible prophecy, but other issues that we that we deal with here on Breaking News. And so we'll be adding that every day, too. It'll be separate from Breaking News. We'll talk about it tomorrow, and we'll explain in detail what we're going to do. And we trust it'll be a blessing to you. So that's coming tomorrow, your Bible questions answered. All right, let's look at the headlines now. Headline number one, you know, no peace for Israel. Erdogan's son, Erdogan, of course, the leader of Turkey, turning Hagia Sophia into a mosque was the first step towards freedom for Jerusalem and Al-Aqsa. All right, uh, Hagia Sophia is one of the greatest churches ever built. Byzantine church built in Istanbul, Constantinople, Turkey, and um, it's been turned into a mosque by the uh, uh, people that Erdogan and his ilk there in Turkey in recent years. Now, the son of Erdogan made this interesting statement. The, the son of the, this NATO member, which is ostensibly a U.S. ally, that's Turkey, he said, we know that the, we know that those who are creating artificial agendas and trying to divide us, who are trying to dilute the Palestinian cause, we know that they're agents of influence of who? America and Israel. All right, this is coming from supposedly a U.S. ally with friends like this. Who needs enemies? Like Robert Spencer says, Turkey should not be in NATO or be considered a U.S. ally, which it is not. But in Washington, such talk is dismissed as Islamophobic. But with friends like this, who needs enemies? Turkey's will, Turkey will be front and center, we're told in Scripture, according to last day's Bible prophecy in the Ezekiel 38-39 invasion. We've documented this, uh, two of the names of the uh, geographical areas are modern-day Turkey, that is Gomer and Beth Togarma. And so Turkey will be a huge player in the last days and uh, Bible prophecy. But again, they're attacking the U.S., they're attacking Israel, turning a, a Christian church into a mosque, and basically saying, um, you know, we're doing this because this is going to bring Islam to the world. Uh, Erdogan, the leader of Turkey, we mentioned this yesterday, sees himself as kind of like the new leader that'll bring back the old Ottoman Empire, which ruled for 400 years um, in very, uh, large swaths of land, not only in the Middle East, but even further than that. And so um, not surprising, but again, U.S. ally, member of NATO, attacking both U.S. and Israel. Now, speaking of Israel, here's the problem, the lack of peace. We call this uh, next headline is a second front coming. All right, we have the front now in Hamas. They're attacking Israel, obviously, they've attacked Israel, and they're getting their, their just desserts, as it were, from the uh, invasion, the military incursion into Gaza. But remember, Israel's also being attacked from Judea, Samaria, the West Bank, from Syria, from Yemen, the Houthis, and also from Iran. And so they're, they're getting it from various places. But the real threat 
is coming from southern Lebanon or Hezbollah. And this is a, a very dicey story here. It happened yesterday. Headline number two, Hezbollah fires dozens of rockets in initial response, initial response to killing of Hamas leader. A Hezbollah terror group in Lebanon fired a barrage of dozens of rockets into Israel on Saturday in a move it calls its, get this, initial response to the alleged Israeli killing of Hamas terror chief Saleh el Aruri in Lebanon last week. There were no reports of injuries. The IDF says that 40 rockets were fired from Lebanon at the area of northern Israel. Hezbollah said it targeted an Israeli military insp installation in the area with 62 various types of missiles. Now, this Iran-backed terror group said in a statement this is part of the initial response to the crime of assassinating this great leader, Sheikh Saleh, Saleh El al Aruri. All right, the rocket salvo triggered incoming rocket and drone alerts in 90 90 communities across northern Israel. Uh, an hour later, sirens again triggered in 40 different communities in northern Israel. Several more projectiles were fired by Hezbollah at the Matula area on the border. The barrage is one of the largest seen since the start of these skirmishes since October 7th with the murders of these 1,200 plus uh, Israelis there by Hamas. And this rocket attack came a day after the Hezbollah chief there in Lebanon, Hassan Nasrallah, threatened Israel's northern residents. And he said they would be the first to pay the price if a full-scale war would be to erupt along the front. He said the response is coming. The decision has been made. The matter now depends on what will unfold on the ground and on Allah. He said we cannot remain silent on a violation of this magnitude because it means the whole of Lebanon would be exposed. Uh, asserting that they cannot allow Israel to succeed its operations in Gaza. It would lead the IDF to following suit in Lebanon, getting rid of these terrorist people. Now, remember, after the 2006 war, there was supposed to be an 18-mile buffer zone between Israel and the uh, and Lebanon, as it were. The UN was supposed to be taking care of that, so there were no terrorists there. What happened? Well, not only are there terrorists, there's 150,000 missiles there aimed at Israel. And so 150,000 rockets, terror tunnels in Lebanon, as we mentioned, that are more sophisticated than the ones in Gaza. And there's thousands of fanatic fighters waiting to invade Israel. No peace for Israel. And it continues. They're back in the land, but without peace. Headline number three, and here is the follow-up to this, uh, is the response, of it, the response of Israel. Israel says, U.S. to the U.S., if diplomatic process fails, it is obligated to act in Lebanon. Israel has conveyed a message to Amos Hochstein, the, the special envoy of U.S. President Joe Biden, during his recent visit to the country. According to the message, Israel is interested in the success of its diplomatic efforts. But if they fail, and of course they will, it will be committed to taking military action to push Hezbollah away from southern Lebanon. Israel has clarified without the removal of Hezbollah, Residents of the north will refuse to return to their homes. There's dozens of communities there where the people have left and have not come back since October 7th. And Israel is not optimistic about the diplomatic process, but is attempting to follow it through to the end, primarily to gain legitimacy in case military action is necessary in the north. Well, if Lebanon keeps sending rockets like this and the people can't come back to their homes, you, I'm afraid after they clean up the mess in Gaza. And by the way, the northern part of Gaza, they talked about it yesterday, is seemingly totally under control of Israel. Of Israel. So now it's the southern part they're getting to. So they're making progress. But here you've got this northern front that's getting dicier and dicier. Now, this next story is pathetic, but it's uh, you know typical of the world we live in. The U.S. worries that Netanyahu may use Lebanon, the Lebanon front, for political survival. The U.S., I should read the leftists in the U.S., uh, was were concerned that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu would use the Lebanon front as a means to ensure his political survival. This is from the uber leftist Washington Post. They reported yesterday, American officials, leftist American officials, warned Israel after covert intelligence analysis in Washington indicated that Israel would struggle to succeed in a war against Hezbollah while forces spread thin amidst the Gaza war, the report said. So here's the U.S. worried about a duly elected prime minister that he'll remain in office because they want to control Israel and what they do and what they don't do in that part of the world after they're being attacked, uh, unprovoked attacks from not only what we saw from Gaza on October 7th, but from Lebanon also. 
and they're responding to attacks. What's going on in Lebanon is a response to an attack. What's going on in Gaza is a response to an attack. And yet the U.S. is worried, the leftists in the U.S. are concerned that the prime minister will remain in office and keep fighting back and protecting Israel. And again, this shows why the U.S., why the downfall will take place. Now, the fifth update, and the last one we're going to do today, is talking about why things will only get worse in our world. It's, it's a terrible sign of the times. It's HMV. HMV is a uh, basically a... Uh, retail retailer giant in the UK. Um, they were plugging a film about British humanitarian Nicholas Winton, which stars Anthony Hopkins and Helen Bonham Carter. All right, they're plugging this film. Here's what the tweet said. The story of British humanitarian Nicholas Winton, who helped save hundreds of Central European children from the Nazis on the eve of World War II, secure your copy. All right, that was the ad from HMV. Well, what's missing? Uh, Central European children, they were Jewish children, but they can't get themselves to use the word Jewish. Now, it wouldn't do for them to look as though if they were against killing of Jewish children in these days, we can't look like they're against that. And again, if, you, if they would have said Jewish children, their promotion, because that's what the movie's all about, uh, they would be crying for blood in front of every HMV outlet within minutes. All right, and so it goes. The continuous search for peace for the nation of Israel that they've longed for since its rebirth in 1948. We know from scripture that a false peace is coming, like we said, from this predicted man of sin. And again, whose coming intersects the second coming of Jesus Christ. So here's the question again. How did the scriptures know that in the last days the Jews would still exist? They would be back in their ancient homeland after being away for a long time. They would form a modern state. They would reunite Jerusalem. But in all of this, Scripture also tells us they will not have peace with their neighbors. How do we know this? Because the God of the Bible has told us this ahead of time. In fact, 2,700 years ago, the Lord said this through the prophet Isaiah. Remember the things I have done in the past, for I am God. I am God. There is none like me. Only I can tell you the future before it even happens. Everything I plan will come to pass, for I do whatever I wished. I wish, that's Isaiah 46, 9 and 10 from the New Living Translation. God's plan is moving forward. He has told us ahead of time what will happen. Paul told the Thessalonians long ago in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, when writing about the rapture of the church and the coming of the Lord, he says, I don't want you to be uninformed brothers and sisters. All right, let's stay informed. Let's look at what's going on and understand it from a biblical perspective. I'm Don Stewart. Thanks for watching. Until tomorrow, may the Lord richly, richly bless.